If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. With me, as always, is Joshua Radawan. We are spiritual coaches. I am a transformational shaman, and we are here to help you on the express train to your bliss, your happiness, and the highest version of your authentic self. So today we are going to talk about how we want to talk about stepping into your hero's journey, right? So are you on your hero's journey yet? Well, yeah, you are. You may not be aware of it, but we are all on our own hero's journey. So yeah, the question to ask yourself is, are you Frodo or are you Samwise Gamgee right now? Are you being your own person or are you, you know, tacking on to somebody else's journey? Not that Samwise was a bad guy because Samwise was awesome. I'm, I'm, he's probably my favorite guy in the Lord of the Rings. But if you don't speak Lord of the Wings, Rings, what I'm saying is, are you the main character or are you the, the uh, sidekick? In your own journey and so that's the question is you know are you standing in a place where you are the center of your story because that is what we are shooting for in this process and i want to be really clear because i can hear people going but I, I like to be supportive and i like to da, da, da. i'm like i can hear you guys like saying this to me yes you can absolutely be supportive you can absolutely have that be what you want to do in your life. And you should still be the center of your own existence because you're not going to be the center of somebody else's. And this fantasy of the, the US culture and movies, the Hollywood fantasy of, you know, I'm the center of your uh, you know, in a, in a perfect partnership, I'm the center of your happiness and you're the center of my happiness. And, and you know, we, we do it for each other is an unrealistic fantasy. It really is because it sets you up for failure because at some point your partner is not going to be available to take care of you, whether they're out of town, whether they're sick, whether they're just exhausted or having a bad day or not available, Right. And then if you are not responsible for your own happiness, then you're left sitting there going, oh, nobody's taking care of me. And nobody takes care of you because the person who is responsible for that is not there. And that's exhausting for each of you to have to be responsible for the other's happiness. You need to take back responsibility for that, that you need to be the center of your own happiness. You need to be responsible for it. It needs to be your job. You can delegate it at times and sometimes a lot to your partner and say, you know, I, I, I need, right. So I, I had a tough day yesterday personally, and my husband was just wonderful. I just like, eh, and he was like, what do you need, honey? I'm like, I need popcorn would you make me popcorn? And he's like, yeah, I'll make you popcorn. My, I'm, I, I am blessed to be married to a chef. So <laughs> he'll make me anything I ask for. And, and he's, he made me popcorn. And then, you know, we, we sat and watched a TV show that I like. And we, you know, we just, just took a chance. He's like, let's go for a walk on the river. And I'm like, oh, I would love to go for a walk on the river, right? So, you know, he can be supportive in that way. And he loves to do that. And this is part of our, our standard relationship. But ultimately, I am aware that I am responsible for my own happiness. And therefore, I knew that I wanted to ask for what I needed. I looked at him, I said, I need to get out of the house. He's like, let's go for a walk on the river. I'm like, Great. You know, we are actually, we tried to go play cribbage at one of the local places and nobody was there to play with. And he was, then he suggested the river. So, you know, there was a lot of that stuff going on. And so, you know, you can be helped by somebody else, but ultimately it was my job to make myself happier, right? Ultimately it was my job to take care of myself. And, and that is an important part of the hero's journey. When we make ourselves the center of our own universe, when we can say, I am responsible for making my life better, then we don't blame others when things don't go our way, right? The more you're blaming other people, the less power you're holding. So you're holding 
your own power when you are responsible for everything. The moment you blame somebody, that's where your power goes. Wherever your finger is pointing is where your power goes. When you can take responsibility back for solving your own problem, that's when you are empowered in your own existence. That's when you become the hero of your own journey. So with that set as a foundation point, you know, there's, there's a, uh, I always love this. We, you know, one of the things I do when we start these episodes is I go out and I look and see what are the questions people are asking, right? And one of the questions that people were asking is how long does the spiritual awakening last? And I'm Josh, I'm going to talk a lot in this episode. So I'm going to let you answer this question because then uh, I'm going to go into a very long thing. So that, that, that's yeah. a, that's a great question. You know, eight years into mine, I don't see any, any stopping point. I think, you know, once you step onto the hero's journey or the, the spiritual awakening process, you know, you, you just keep going with it. Um, you know, I think we have periods of rest throughout it. You know, we might plateau, but it's really just, you know, a, a rest period before we start climbing the next peak. So when does a spiritual awakening end? I, I don't think it does, but I do believe, you know, the, the work we do in the beginning gives us the tools to navigate some of the, the roads a little bit better. Yeah. Well, and, and there are stages to the work and I will tell you, I am almost 50 years into my journey and uh, what would that be? Uh, thir 26 years, 26 years into my hardcore personal spiritual evolution path from my awakening. And I'm still on it hardcore. So <laughs> I'm, yeah, no, it doesn't stop. So, but there are stages and there are stages that you go through and having been in this world for 50 years at this point, effectively, you know, not until my birthday in six months, but close enough, then, you know, I've, I've been observing these stages that people go through and going through them myself. And I have, I've managed to codify what the stages of spiritual evolution are and, and, and how people go through their hero's journey, right? And so I'm going to talk about that with you today. And this all comes from my book, The Overachiever's Guide to Spiritual Awakening. And that's available on my website when you're, when you're, if you're ready to, to do that, it covers a lot more than just this, but yeah. But let's talk about this. So the first stage is what I call the discovery stage. And it is the stage where you wake up and you look at your life and you go, there's got to be more to life than this. And you go out and you try and find some change that might be possible. This is when most people come into spiritual work as they're in the discovery stage. And, you know, you come in looking for a solution to your life and you get distracted by angels and tarot cards and crystals and, you know, all the white light and bunnies, right? You have 5D consciousness and all of the things, right? Again, and there's so many things. Oh my God, so many things. I like so many things that I've been studying this stuff for 50 years and every, uh, you know, at least once every three months, somebody comes up and asks me a question about something I have never heard of. That's how many things there are. Okay. And, and there's constantly new stuff being channeled and all the things, right? So you could get distracted in this section for forever. But for the average person, it takes about two to five years. They get lost in the, the woo woo, you know, bright and shiny, all the new things for two to five years. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast is I want to make sure that you guys can get what you need without having to lose two to five years in the process, right? My goal is in 10 to 15 episodes, you will get through the discovery phase and move into phase two, which is proof and proselytizing. Okay. Now proselytizing for those of you who aren't like, you know, vocabulary queens and kings is it, it's going out and preaching to the world, right? So, so proof and proselytizing means, holy crap, this stuff really works. I must tell everyone I know and drag them out to classes with me so they won't think I'm nuts. Okay, that's this phase, right? And we all go through that. And so, you know, this is the stage where you're bringing people into the classes that you're taking and you're, you're quietly telling your friends and hoping that they want to come along because that's a little scary if they don't. And, and uh, all the things, right? And we talked about that on the last episode, which if your friends don't want to come with you, there's a chance that you may lose them, right? 
And so that's part of what this process is about, is that there is an inherent understanding in your beingness that you know that if they don't say yes to coming to this with you, that you may not be able to keep them in the long run if you keep going down this path, right? So stage three is what I refer to affectionately as the spiritual orientation slash addiction and prove it stage. And so this is, there's a combination of factors in here, right? So the, once you realize that this stuff really works, then you're trying to figure out where you fit in this brave new world that you have exposed yourself to and how does it work, right? We, we are generally people who are really safety focused. We're like, I need to understand what's going on. So why don't screw things up, right? That there's this phase that you go into and it, it starts off with orientation. And so you're buying every book you can find. You're downloading every podcast you can listen to. You are, you're, you're going to classes and oh, my nose and you are basically trying to consume as much information as humanly possible in order to really orient yourself to this new world. And because it is such a huge world, there is no way to learn it all. And we get into this idea that we need to learn it all. And that creates a spiritual addiction where you are consuming, 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 and not feeling better, not doing better, not, you know, there's no growth happening. It's just consumption happening. And that is a spiritual addiction. And so, you know, there's this place where you have to figure out, you know, how much is enough before you can move into the next phase, right? And, and the, the, the same time as you're doing this, you're also doing a prove it piece, which is prove it to yourself that you can do this, not just that it works for other people, but that it works for you. And so, you know, you often end up in things like law of attraction and magic and, you know, the healing work and anything that is energy based that you can do, that you can prove to yourself that you can do it. So psychic skills, things like that. And so all of these things happen together which is kind of this mush of stuff happening at the same time because you're orienting, right? And then at some point you have to stop looking for the magic pill that solves all your problems because that is the key to getting out of this phase, right? You have to stop looking for that magic pill because that's really what you're doing. You're like, oh, I'm orienting. Oh, I'm learning about this. Oh, I'm interested in that. But no, you're looking for the magic pill to solve your problems. That's what this journey, that's what this part of the hero's journey is all about. And so instead, you need to turn inwards and realize that you are the answer to your problems. You are the solution to your limiting beliefs. You are the answer. The hero's journey is you, right? It's not outside of you. It's not what, something you can learn. It's not something somebody else can do to you or for you. It is you. Okay. And when you do that, that's when you enter into stage four. And that's usually where people come to work with me, by the way, <laughs> to work with the, this is where people enter into the spiritual, the, into the mystery school. So and let me just define that for people for a second. A, a mystery school is the place where you learn how to evolve as a person and you learn how to master the energetics of the world around you. And you learn how to develop your highest level of human potential. So that's the definition of a mystery school and the spirit guides mystery school does all of that. And, and at stage, uh, you know, stage three, stage four is right about where people come in and start working with us. So if that's start, sounding familiar to you, this would be the perfect time for you to come and see us. But stage four is retreat for, for personal reflection and study. So this is where you're actually beginning your true personal growth work and you're really starting to make transition, right? So. Once you get to that, there's stage five, which is surrender to the universe, learning how to be and releasing control. And I know that that sounds overwhelming right now. Don't panic. When you're ready, you're ready. And that's, that's where you'll be. Uh, stage six will be choosing who to be and stepping into your power. And that one, again, <laughs> may feel a little like, mm, I don't know. 
right? But it's, it's there. Stage seven is awareness and reflection. It's letting go of the story of who you are. Okay. So there's choosing who you want to be in stage six, but then there's stepping into, you know, letting go of the story of who you thought you were, right? Because you can choose who you want to be, but you still have to let go of that other piece. And that's often where we get stuck. It's like, oh, I want to be this person, but this is who I am. This is who I am. This is who I am. It's like, but I want to be this person, but this is who I am. And so that's the identity tango we talked about in the last episode. Stage eight is stripping down. It is letting go of fear-based responses that hide your true self. And, you know, this stage you really kind of do in concert with stage seven. So, you know, in, in this stage, you're really identifying and removing the masks that you're wearing, the coping mechanisms that you've got, the judgment-based patterns that, that are, are in place. And all of this is to find the real you underneath everything. You know, and it, included in this is, is the roles we play, you know, the dutiful child, the perfect parent, the ideal spouse, all of these things, right? And the ways that you define yourself, the, the you know, these are the things that make you be less than your authentic self. And all of these have to be examined and released to free yourself from the limitations involved. Okay, now, that's stage seven and eight, which are kind of done together. Stage nine is self-acceptance and owning your power, okay? Now, this stage is where you learn how to step into your power and trust yourself, okay? So I know we talked about owning your power in stage six, I think it was. Yep, stage six. It's That's stepping into your power. That's a testing stage, right? So we, we test if we can do this. Well, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. It's I'm going to try it you know, little bits here and there. And this happens a lot, especially in like the law of attraction, right? You'll see people do work in the law of attraction, they'll manifest something amazing. And they'll be like, wow, that's really cool. And then they will never try to manifest anything ever again. Okay, that's a stage six response. Okay, because they saw their power, got intimidated by it, and then walked away from it. Okay, that happens a lot. And so that's why we have two stages. We have the, you know, you test it out and you go, mm, I'm powerful. What does that mean? Right. And then we freak out, shut down, walk away. Nope. Not opening that book again for a while. Right. And the thing about that is, is that, you know, we, we limit our power. We limit our access to our power for so long as we hold rage. And oftentimes we haven't done the rage work by the time we hit that stage six. And so when you know that you will go ballistic on people once in a blue moon, and then you see you are an incredibly powerful human, you'll be like, nope, can't be powerful. I might lay waste to the world on those moments that I go ballistic on people, right? And I don't want to do that because I'm a good person. So I'm going to take my power back. Or maybe you were stepping into your power at some point and hurt somebody's feelings and you damaged somebody and you're like, mm, nope, nope, nope. Never forgave myself for that thing that I did when I was 12. Been paying penance for that for the rest of my life. And now I can't own my power because, you know, I hurt somebody once 30 years ago. <laughs> it's like, but we do that, right? We think, oh, I can't be trusted with power. So we don't give ourselves access to it. And so this is why there are two stages of power. And so in stage nine, we are really stepping into self-acceptance. And that part of that is self-forgiveness, right? Um, which, by the way, Carol Burnett has the best definition of forgiveness I have ever heard in my life, which is forgiveness is giving up all hope of a better yesterday. And so that is literally the acceptance of and the, the stopping of the shoulding of things should have been different, right? And, and that's the core of self-acceptance piece on this. And so when you can step into self-acceptance and self-forgiveness, and then you, then you can step in and actually start to own your own power, okay? And, you know, a lot of that's about learning how to trust yourself too, which is, again, that emptying the well of rage piece. Stage 10 is all about self-love. It is learning how to be still and alone with yourself, letting go of the need to be different than who you are, recognizing that you have value when you are doing nothing. I'm going to say that again. You have value when you are doing nothing. 
If, if your brain just went blank, that's, that's a lesson that you need to learn, right? Uh, especially in Western culture, especially in US culture, our value is entirely based upon our productivity in our culture. And so with self love, you learn how to love yourself and value yourself, not for your productivity, but for your beingness. And so that's another stage. And that will reduce, oh, you want to talk about reducing stress levels. Oh my God. <laughs> reducing stress levels and the need to be perfect and all the stuff goes away with that. And then stage 11 is identifying your purpose and pursuing it. And so, you know, once you hit stage 11, you will go back to stage five again and work your way through. And this, this series of stages will cycle over and over again until you are ready to transcend them. And, you know, it's, it's a long process. So, but th this is all that's relevant to you right now. Okay. There is, there is more after that, but this is all that's relevant to you in this moment. And, but this will define for you how to climb the ladder of the, of the hero's journey, right? Each of these has a process that you go through and a way to transcend it. All of that's spelled out in my book if you guys want more information on it. But the, the process has a series of steps. And I know for my people who love their structure and their forms, and you guys know who you are, you're listening right now. I know you are because <laughs> I am an engineer brain and I must have structure and form. And this is why over the last 50 years I have codified these things because, you know, I never found a codification for it. So there, there are some hero's journey stuff out there on the internet for people who are writing stories of heroes and their journeys. And you will find that if you go look those up, that this, this is going to look somewhat similar, but not entirely the same because they're doing a storytelling journey and we're doing an inner journey. And so there, there'll be some overlap, but they're not exactly the same. And so, you know, I want you to really think your, your thought for today is what is my hero's journey? Who do I want to be as the hero in my own life? And how am I living into or not living into that vision? Those simple questions will provide you with a lot of insight on ways to change your life. Josh, you have anything you want to add to this? As someone who's uh, undertook this process, I will say that this is the ultimate hack in life, right? When we talk about hacking the matrix, this is how you do it. You, you get into the journey, you, you follow the stages and, and like she said, they, they come back over and over again. And we, you know, it's, it's, it's really about this, you know, coming full circle, but it's, it's that spiral, right? It's like we come back to similar places with a deeper understanding of a, and a deeper truth within ourselves. And it, and it starts over again. And it's, it's a beautiful process. You know, I wouldn't trade my journey for anything in the world, even though, you know, getting started those first four stages before I, I hit your doorstep, but, you know, the rabbit hole stage that was, you know, like took so much energy and, and it fried my mind so much because, you know, you got all this information pumping and none of it is in a structured way that made sense. And then when I when I first started my work with you, I was like, oh, that's so much easier and I, I can do it in 15 <laughs> minutes a day. <laughs> are, are you kidding me? And, and, it, and, you know, four years into this this particular work, my life has changed irrevocably. And I feel like I am finally on the hero's journey. Even though I've always been there, I can now see the signs of, you know, really, really coming into my, my the fullest expression of myself. And I, I will say that I see that for you as well. It has been a really fun thing to watch you grow. It's been I always, really. I always joke that I'm yeah. Kelly's Mona Lisa. Uh, and she always says, I just hold the <laughs> container. <laughs> all I do. I, you can't make anybody else grow, right? We, yep. we had this conversation. We did. And, you know, all you can do is hold the space and provide the, the inspiration. And if they take it, great. And if they don't, oh, well, you know, it, you know, it, it is their journey. It is their personal hero's journey. And so, you know, this is, it's one of those very personal things 
that we learn how to do. And I highly encourage it. And I wish you the best on your journey. And I know you can do this. I believe in you. All right. I believe in you as well. That's all we have for this time. Remember, your attention is what you attract. Your intention is what you create. Choose wisely, young Jedis. Have a good one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show